We're in Washington, D.C., and today we're visiting the most prominent monument on the National Mall. We're also meeting up with a person with a great legacy of managing all the national lands, including the parks. Hey, Sally, how are hey, you? Dalton, so nice to see you again. You too. Hey, good to see yeah, you. Good to see you too. Sally Jewell was U.S. Secretary of the Interior under President Obama and a hiking buddy from our trip to Mount Rainier National Park. So I have a recommendation for you, which is maybe just a little more adventure than what visitors to the Washington Monument get to do, and that is, okay. how about we take the stairs? Oh, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. It's just 550 or so feet. The Washington Monument is the world's tallest stone structure, made from blocks of marble, granite, and bluestone gneiss. It was designed in 1835 as a tribute to General George Washington, who won the Revolutionary War, the first president who set the precedent for voluntarily stepping down after two terms. He remains an enduring model of integrity and public service. We're going to do what uh, the general public's not allowed to do, and that is we're going to take the stairs, and we're going to look at the inside guts and how this incredible stone structure was built. This is the stairwell to the Washington Monument. Oh, my gosh. So it's kind of narrow down here because the walls have to be really thick to support all that load of rocks that are up above us. This thing's pretty tall. Are yeah, you sure you want It's to pretty that? tall, yeah. It's uh, 555 feet, and there's also no reinforcing bar in here. And this is not actually holding them together. This mortar just keeps the water out. Wow. This is incredible. Yeah, so should we pick up the pace? What do you think? I, yeah, I think we're going to have to. <laughs> we got a ways to go. <laughs> the inner walls of the monument tell a story about how this amazing structure was built. Work started in 1848. Six years later, it stopped. Washington Monument was only just a 150 feet or so tall when it stopped for 20 years because they ran out of money. When construction started again, the marble came from a different quarry. That's why the monument is lighter on the bottom and darker at the top. It took millions of dollars in donations from individuals, companies, and states, and the donors got their names built into the walls. So here you got the Association of Journeymen, Stonecutters of Philadelphia. Whoa. Donated July 9th, 1850. Wow, that's, that's pretty... And it's the Stonecutters of America. Yeah, you expect yeah, it to be good work, right? That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame most visitors never get to see all this, but so many people were breaking off bits of the stone as souvenirs, the Park Service had to close the stairs to the general public in 1976. This is cool on so many different fronts, but this is a national park. You need all these different people chipping in to preserve it, to keep it going. That's exactly right. And it's, it's just a great example. It's written on the wall, you know? The higher we get, the more of the monument story we see. There are 193 memorial stones on the east and west interior walls of the monument. Many of them are considered valuable works of art. They start at the 30-foot level and go as high as the 450-foot level. You see these are kind of rough cut stones and uh, different shapes and sizes. And we're about to cross the time from when the monument stopped construction because they ran out of money. And then you see this kind of engineered stone above, and this is when the Army Corps engineers took over. Construction first stopped in 1854, then picked up again in 1878, when there was a new technology for building with stone. Yeah, because down there, right? it looked like the rocks were kind of more jagged yeah. and rough, and up here, they look really nice and smooth. Exactly. So part of that's just the evolution of machinery. Yeah. yeah. So we gotta keep going, we're not even a third of the way. <laughs> the monument suffered a near disaster in 2011 when a Virginia earthquake shook stones loose from the exterior and opened cracks throughout the structure. It's lucky the whole pile of stones didn't come crashing down and it took almost three years and almost three miles worth of sealant to fill the cracks and repair the stones. So they had actually a beautiful scaffolding all the way up the outside of the monument. So the director of the National Park Service I think we could climb up that? So I had an opportunity with the construction crew to climb up the outside of the scaffolding and to look down on the top of the Washington Monument. The repairs included an upgrade to the elevator, which first opened back in 1926. So the elevator was originally only for men. Really? They wouldn't allow women and children on the elevator. They all had to take the stairs because they were afraid the elevator was just too dangerous for women and children. Oh, oh. Because I was going to say, I would think it'd be the other way. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Well, steam-powered elevator, and I think they were a little worried. 
it might fail. We've almost reached the top floor of the Washington Monument. Just above us, we can see the floor of the Visitor Center. Here we go, almost to the summit. All right. Oh. Except there's one more level to go. This is where the elevator admits visitors to a small museum about the history of the monument. A few more stairs get us to the top floor, right below the point of the monument. So this is the observation level. Here we are. When it opened in 1878, this was the tallest building in the world. It's still the tallest in Washington, D.C., and no place else offers city views like this. This is absolutely incredible. It takes until you really get up to the top to see how tall the Washington Monument is, and D.C. as a whole. And one of the neat things about this city is the buildings have to be shorter than the Capitol. Mm -hmm. So you actually get a sense of spaciousness yeah. that is uh, unusual in a, in a large city. In spite of all its grand monuments and imposing buildings, Sally says the true purpose of the National Mall is to be America's shared front yard. But this is a place where, you know, people really enjoy themselves. These are public lands. They're owned by all people. And this was how the national parks were set up 100 years ago. They were set up not as a playground for the rich and famous, but as a place that was here for all Americans. And that is just... It really was America's best idea. Yeah. And still is. Coming to Washington is a good reminder that our national parks are not just about preserving America's incredible natural beauty. They also tell the story of who we are, how we got where we are, the vision of liberty and justice for all, and the sacrifices people have made to make it a reality. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.